Um, I think what I'm, what I'm looking at is a bunch of activists, and so the way I want to, I think, treat this is providing you with resources that you can use in your activism. So I want you to, I'm going to show a series of slides, and I want you to stop me at every one where you have a question so that you can then use these or the information that's in them to spread the word on universal health care and it's, it, it both it's the, the fact that it is realistic, we can do it, and it will help everyone in this country get the health care that they really need. So uh, I will start, and I, but I want you to, as I say, break in at any point if you have any questions, because I want, I'll, I'll make this available. It's public information, and uh, I'll, I'll give it to Joel, and it's pieces of it are already on the web in various places, uh, and I'll, uh, so, in fact, the, the, a video of me doing this two weeks ago in New York City is, is on the web. Um, <coughs> I should say, in terms of organizations, I work mostly with uh, Physicians for a National Health Program, because we sort of prepare these kinds of slideshows that provide people with the information they need. I'm also on the board of the Campaign for New York Health, which is an organization we created two years ago to uh, lobby, basically to lobby for uh, the New York Health Act, which is where I will be ending up in this, in this talk. Um, the Campaign for New York Health is you are those of you who are signing this sign-up sheet, I hope you all will, will get information on that campaign as it develops. There are now at least 30,000 New Yorkers on our list from around the state. We have an upstate organizer who's based in Rochester, and we have a, the director of the campaign, Katie Robbins, is, is in New York City, basically at the, at the New York State Nurses Association, which is uh, actively supporting uh, universal single-payer health care in New York. So let me start and, as I say, stop me instantly if you have any questions or want some clarification. So this is a, this shows how New Yorkers get or don't get their access to their health care uh, these days. Uh, financial, unfortunately the wall is a little, uh, doesn't produce the best uh, picture, so if you have any questions, as I say, stop me. So this is based on data from the New York State Health Department and from the Census Bureau, both of which do surveys on how we get our health care. So the green shows how most, about half of all Americans and all New Yorkers get their health care from their employers, that is access to their health care financially. Um, uh, let, me, let me step back and be, clarify. What we're talking about is how do we pay for health care? That's the issue in this country. The, the professionals who provide it are excellent. The problem is they work in a totally messed up, broken is the phrase you often hear, financing system, which means that many people can't get access to the health care they need. Uh, right down here, more than a million people in New York don't have any insurance at all. That means, for a, for a, that's based on a survey that the Census Bureau does once a year. And they ask, did you have a health insurance at any time during the previous year? And if you answer no, you're among that one million people. That's people who had no insurance for an entire year. Lots of people don't have insurance uh, between when they're between jobs, so it's probably about twice that many that have no insurance. Uh, there's also a phenomenon which I'll talk more about as we go along, which people refer to as underinsurance. That is, people who, uh, when they get sick, find their insurance act doesn't cover the cost. And a million Americans each year uh, proportionally the number, whatever the number is for New York, go bankrupt because of their medical bills. Uh, they have to declare personal bankruptcy. Uh, so, uh, and what I say, I mean, the, the data says that uh, about a million New Yorkers are underinsured. What that means is last year they had more than 10% of their income go into medical bills, so they couldn't afford the other basic necessities of life. Uh, my feeling is, I think, the better way of saying it is we're all underinsured. It's just most of us are lucky enough in any one year not to actually in incur large medical expenses. But when we do, we discover, in fact, that the deductibles and the copays and the things that are out of network and that aren't covered 
lead, lead to thousands or tens of thousands or sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars in bills that the insurance companies don't cover. So uh, let me go back to this pie chart again. So about half of New Yorkers, 10 million out of the 20 million, get insurance through their employers. Uh, another 5 million in New York are on Medicaid. A quarter of the population of New York is on Medicaid and almost 20, 25% of all of, of Americans. Uh, 70, over 70 million Americans out of 300 million are, uh, are on Medicaid today. Uh, I'll explain that. It's not that they're all poor. It's that their medical bills are bigger or more than they can afford and the hospitals want to get paid so the hospitals arrange for them to get covered by Medicaid, which then pays their bill. Uh, Medicare, almost two million New Yorkers are on Medicare. Some proportion are on both, Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, <coughs> and then there's the new Obamacare marketplace, the New York State of Health, it's called, somewhat mysteriously. Uh, it's about a million people get their insurance, buy their insurance on the New York State marketplace. And then another uh, almost two million people get their insurance buy it on their own. Their employers don't provide it, but they buy it. Individuals are mostly self-employed people. So it's a very, very complex system. What that means from the doctor's point of view and the hospital's point of view is that they may have to maintain complex and expensive billing systems in which they have to decide for every patient who's, who's covering them, who, what part is covered, what's not covered, and they have to know what the plan is that the person is on and what, what's covered and not covered. It's a very, very complex system. Hosp major hospitals have hundreds of people in their billing departments. Uh, Canadian hospitals don't have billing departments. Well, the ones near in Toronto and Montreal do because sometimes Americans get sick and then they have to bill Americans. But other than that, they don't need billing departments because they have a single payer system. So this is the starting point that the complexity of the system. That is, it's, the message here at the top is it's complex and it still doesn't cover everybody. Okay, so here's why insurance, why healthcare became a political issue, became a political issue in the, back in the 90s when the Clinton, Clintons tried to develop a plan and then when, again when Obama was elected because of the extraordinary rise in the cost of health care. This is a survey based on a survey of employers. You can get the data from employers, you can survey them, and about half of all Americans get their insurance through their employment. So if you go back down to 2000, come to the period, here, a family policy cost $6,000. In 2000, it costs $18,000 now. The cost rises, it costs triple in just the 16 years we're talking about here. And right, the cost of healthcare rises twice as fast as the cost of everything else. What that means in real terms is that people, that more and more of people's dollar has to go to healthcare and less and less to the other things that you need in order to survive. <clears throat> and it hits both businesses which pay this portion and the, and the employees that pay uh, about a third of the total. So everybody gets hit by this. Uh, you don't get more health care, you just get more expensive health care. So <clears throat> this creates a crisis for everybody, leads to the passage, led to the passage of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, uh, back in 2010. But you can see that didn't slow the rise of health care, it just kept going. No, no difference. So what, what is the consequence of the rising cost of health care. One is fewer and fewer businesses can afford to provide health care for their employees. And so the percentage of workers who get coverage through their employers keeps dropping, you know, from a high back in the 75 down, you know, substantial drop from 85% down to 65. 